So markets don't usually panic higher or like melt up. Yellen is speaking on Friday at Harvard. That kind of smells like short covering to me. You know, we had the three worst performing sectors since that May 2015 top leading us today. We have like materials, financials, and energy. Those are the worst performing sectors. So it really smells like short covering. Plus, internals are diverging lower against technical resistance in the indexes. So we took off a lot of long positions today and actually went short. So I think we got to make a key change here. Pretty, we haven't done this yet on our new guy, which I still don't have a name for him yet. So his horns have been pointing up with the green lights. I'll be right back. There we go, fixed. Let's hit the charts. S&P 60 minute chart. The decline from April 20th all the way to May 19th has been pretty good, decent, decent sell off. It took about a month. And then all of a sudden from May 19th to May 25th in a week, we just like straight shotted right into the zone of fib resistance. There's one clear correction we can work with an ABC right there that helps calculate the zone of fib resistance. So basically guys, we've run smack dab into a wall between 2088 and 2101. That's the fib in Elliott. Let's bring over the internals. This looks like kind of a mess, but basically what you're looking at here is in the green and red, this is the vol spread. And this is a total of all the volume that's traded on advancing shares that particular day, subtracted from all the volume that's traded in the declining shares, all within the S&P, right? So if you have more volume concentrated in the up shares, you're going to get a green bar that day. Or if you have more volume concentrated in the down shares in the S&P, you'll get a red bar. So I, I made a, a 20 period moving average on top of that to kind of smooth this out to show you the trend. So right here in the blue line, this is the 20 period moving average of the vol spread. You can see it's moving up. Just below here is the S&P. Okay. And the two correlate pretty well right until there. Then it's like peace out. Uh, blue line starts heading lower as more volume is concentrated on the downside and the down shares than volume that's concentrated on the upside. That's the only thing that can make the moving average go lower. Right. So as you start to put these two on top of each other, you can see vol spread moving down while the S&P kind of lost its uptrend, had a big, decent sized decline there, made a new high. But look, vol spread keeps falling away. Then all of a sudden the S&P drops away. And then last two days, you get this huge rally up ahead of the Fed. That smells like short covering to me. So that's why we moved on a short in the Russell. Big time underperforming. Uh, what we've seen in the S&P and the NASDAQ. So right into a 786, just looking for another decline, then a low should be found. Another market I think is interesting that confirms this is gold. Gold's gotten crushed. We're moving into good FIB support here. This, you have two green FIB support levels, and those are kind of textbook support levels for a wave three. We're looking at this black three. So gold has really moved down, um, and it looks like set to move higher up here in wave four. We actually went long. We did a diagonal in GDX with customers today. Um, just a real simple little ABC pullback. GDX has been stronger than the underlying gold market. Gold market's in a wave three FIB support zone. GDX is into a pretty juicy uh, zone of FIB support on its own. So here's the trade we put on in GDX. Um, in the uh, June 3rds that expired on June 3rd, we sold the 24 and a half calls. Then we went out to the next series, uh, the June 16s, and we bought the 22 and a half. So we have a 22 and a half, 24 and a half uh, diagonal. Um, looks like, you know, volatility could kind of settle down here for a little bit, and hopefully the premium melts away on, on, the, uh, on these guys, on the 24 and a halves, while the value kind of stays in the, the longer dated calls, and then we can turn that into a, uh, just a regular call vertical. Um, later on if that trade works. Uh, heads up, I am on CNBC Squawk Box tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. So I should like go to bed now. Have a good one. You're still here? I guess you liked the video. If you did, go ahead and click the thumbs up button or subscribe to this channel directly below and you'll get the videos in real time. Or you're gonna have seven years of bad luck trading and you have to babysit Jake and Brody. Yeah.